Welcome to Remove Before Flight, where we help prepare veterans to start, grow, or scale a business. Welcome back to another episode of Remove Before Flight. In this episode, we are going to discuss work-life balance, provide an introduction to voice search and what it means for your business, and look at the next section in our SEO series, content. Happy Sunday to you. Last week, we had another great episode where we talked about the failures and showed you examples of recovery utilizing Darko Milovich, as well as the reading habits of several successful entrepreneurs. Have you changed your reading habits? We also introduced the contest Remove Before Flight is running to give away a copy of Dwayne's book, Headspace and Timing, Veteran Mental Health from a Combat Veteran's Perspective. At the end of the show last week, I also announced a crazy offer to give any $10 or greater supporter on Patreon 50%, yes, half price on any SEO package from Pinktie. Several of you have already taken me up on this offer, and we appreciate it. Be sure to visit the show notes page after this episode for more details at changerpov.com forward slash rbf013. Share your thoughts on today's episode by joining the nation at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF nation. As an entrepreneur, you have to wear many hats and put in lots of hours, but you also need to ensure you're taking time for you and your family. You will burn yourself out, ruin relationships, and miss out on some really important parts of life if you don't. Trust me. I know. Let's face it, a majority of us listening to this show have had a work-work balance drilled into our head for years, so it is difficult to switch. As the fourth quarter of the year is rapidly approaching, and the majority of us become extremely busy during this time, Most of us are busy converting new customers, fulfilling last-minute orders, or launching special holiday campaigns and offers. All of this is in efforts to drive as much business as we can before the new year. If you want to survive as an entrepreneur and build a successful business, it is essential that you make an effort to invest in work-life balance. I want you to ask yourself the following two questions. 1. Why does work-life balance matter to you? Why is it important? Why do you make it a priority? Why should it matter to other entrepreneurs and leaders? And number two, what is your number one actionable tip for balancing work, life, or work and family? We asked 24 successful entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders these same two questions. I'd like to share with you some of their thoughts. However, I'm also going to ask you to answer these two questions at the RBF Nation and share with the rest of the community your thoughts on work-life balance. So, William Harris, CEO over at Element, Uh, told us that work-life balance is important to him because he's realized that being out of balance causes more stress, tension, and even physical sickness, which gets in the way of productivity and halts his goals. Benjamin Twitchell, marketing director at Wise Pops, tells us that his work is better when his life is balanced. His life is better when his work is balanced. Nathan Chan, CEO over at Founder Magazine, tells us because, like a racehorse, you cannot constantly have it running races. It needs rest, time in the paddock, training, and prep. You need to treat yourself the same. All the most successful entrepreneurs have good work-life balances. Kaylee Moore, a freelance writer over at Luminan, tells us burnout is a huge problem. She struggled with it off and on, but being more intentional about where her boundaries are has made a huge difference. Shayla Price from B2B Content Marketer tells us 
Work-life balance helps some entrepreneurs avoid burnout. Personally, I need it to keep my brain active and produce my best creative work. Those are her words. Have you noticed the trend here? They're all saying to be successful, you need to have work-life balance. You need to avoid burnout. You need to rest. All right. So, what are their tips? Well, Benjamin Twitchell from Wise Pops tells us, you schedule time for your work, right? So, you have to do the same for your life and your family. It doesn't have to be so formal as a Google invite, but there needs to be at least a conscious, mental dedication, uh, a set-aside He's found himself unbalanced when he's scheduling his work time and assuming that his life and family time will simple follow. It doesn't happen. Josh, the CEO over at MWI, says that you got to create boundaries. He used to work 100 plus hours per week, sleep at the office, and never saw his wife. So he's, him and his wife, they created a rule that... He would end his work day at 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Not only did his relationship with his wife improve, but by setting these boundaries meant that he had to be more strategic about his work, which led to a huge growth in his business. A win-win. Family time and growth. Nathan Chan, uh, CEO over at Founder Magazine, uh, utilizes his calendar for everything. Once it goes into his calendar, it happens. You have to treat family time, work-life balance as part of your schedule. Brittany Berger, a content marketer, tells us to make sure to block off your most productive hours for your hardest work, even if that means making sacrifices. For her, she's most productive at night. That means missing out on prime TV, and she loves her TV. Going out with friends after work and staying up late. That's when she'll get the most out of working on her side hustle. While it may make sense for her to wake up early and go to work as others do it, she knows that she'd get less done and have more work to do in the long run. Kaylee Moore, a freelance writer over at Luminan, says set real office hours and stick to them. Turn off email push notifications. Make rigid boundaries that keep you from working when you shouldn't be. Matthew Spur, the COO and co-founder of Q, says that he found that using apps like Balanced have made him more mindful of the balance that He needs to strike in order to keep his mind and body working most efficiently. He's subtly reminded each day that he needs to go drink some water, call an old friend once a month, or watch a TED Talk every week, hit the gym every two days, etc. The overall theme here for each of them, schedule time for you and your family. Do not work 24-7, a lesson I am still trying to master myself. It is tough in a generation full of disruptive, instant notifications and on-demand technology. We just have to turn it off. For me, my schedule constantly fills up, and I let it consume me. So as I was doing research for this, this section of our show... I tried something new this past week, and I started putting those dedicated blocks in my calendar for family time, stuff to do outside of work, so that I'm not totally consumed with work. I've been trying to make a habit of more and more not being on my phone. It is too easy to check the email, look at Facebook, do all kinds of non-productive bullshit. That is exactly what it is. Bullshit. Put it away. What did we do 30 years ago when those little devices were not in everybody's pocket? We enjoyed life. We worked and we played. We need to get back to that time. You know, besides doing everything I'm involved in, running a business, 
uh, having a family, you know, mentoring tons of people, and I do overcommit myself on the mentoring side. I, I've started backing away from that, and not that I don't enjoy it. Um, I've just found that that some of the people don't understand boundaries. You know, you give them an inch and they want a mile. Um, so I've started limiting myself on who I will let into that circle and narrowing it down smaller and smaller as I go. Um, and and it, it amazes me that sometimes I misread people and think that, hey, you know, they're going to be a great fit or I love their product or their idea and will want to follow up with them. However, you know, they're, they're just flooding you all day long with emails and messages and phone calls. And it's like, hey, book a time. You get one hour a week and they want, you know, 12 hours a day. So and, and it's it's just like, do you get rid of them? And the same thing comes down with car, with, with, with customers, clients. You know, you got to partner with the right clients. A few months back, I had a fire one who was eating up the bulk of my time, constantly saying he was not feeling the value and was always trying to get a cheaper price. It got to the point where he was demanding, didn't respect my boundaries, my services, and always wanted shit for free. Working 40 to 60 hours a week on average for him Yet he was paying the equivalent of about 20 hours a month. And he constantly was telling me he felt like I wasn't giving him enough time. Really? There was no winner, winner, chicken dinner. Firing him was one of the best things I could have ever done. Was I worried about losing the income? You bet. But in the long run, it opened my time for something better. About a month later, a new partnership walked into my life. One that is full of positive energy and gets the whole work-life balance. In the past three months, they've had stuff going on each and every month, which they always in extend an invite to me. Stuff like dinners, barbecues, just you know, getting together for a few hours away from like office time and work shit. We talk about family. We don't talk about work. We just go and chill. You know what's that? Uh, almost like a friendship outside of you know working together. It's building that whole relationship. You know, last night, several of their executives, along with myself and my better half, went to see Styx and REO Speedwagging. Kathy loves Styx. Here I get to improve my family life at no expense while also focusing on that work life. A complete balance. Crazy, I know. And there was no shop talk at all at the concert. Just simply a perk. Next weekend, they're hosting a party and screening of the fight that's going on. You bet I will be there. And I'll be taking Change Your POV's Bennett Tanton with me as well. So let's compare these two clients and quickly assess. If both called you right now and asked you to come in and help with an emergency, which one do you think you would drop everything you were doing for and go help? What are you doing to balance your work and life? Share with the rest of the nation at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF nation. What is voice search? Voice search is a feature available on many devices, computers, smartphones, and tablets that allows the user to conduct an internet search by simply talking to the device. One of the most well-known options is called Siri. This is where iPhone users press a button and then speak and get their question answered, an app accessed, or an online search queued. As voice search technology has developed, now most smartphones offer this service as an option, including Google. Google has OK Google or Google Assistant on many Android phones. Even Amazon has gotten into the technology by offering Alexa on their Fire tablets as well as the Echo devices. And we can't forget about Microsoft. With the last couple of releases of Windows, it, it featured Cortina, the voice search that's there to help you on your desktop computer or laptop. So why are we talking about voice search on Remove Before Flight? Because it is important to consider it 
when creating an SEO management plan, especially for small businesses, because any local search should be returning your small business as a result to draw more traffic and increase your customer base. SEO in the traditional form with typed keyword searches may deliver results, but voice search should also be considered in any SEO plan. What role does SEO play with voice search? Any SEO strategy must include a voice search category because voice search is a common way to search the internet from a mobile device. Using voice search is convenient, especially when on the go or in situations that need fast results. Voice search allows users to ask questions and the search provides answers, which means an SEO strategy must adapt to include small businesses to answer common questions. Previously, SEO strategies focused on keywords that may be typed into a search bar. Now, they must also include answering questions where the business would fit as a result. One of the first places to adapt SEO for voice search is to consider the location of the search. Smartphones are used to find results when traveling or on vacation, so having an SEO strategy for voice search that incorporates location will help users locate small businesses and find the results they need. Voice search is used because people want fast and accurate results, so take this into consideration when adapting an SEO strategy to voice search. You know, some of the basics with, with voice search are simple queries like, hey, find restaurants near me, find, you know, entertainment near me, that type of stuff. But it goes even deeper. So I want to share with you some uh, voice search tips for small business. To establish in a voice search strategy for small business, you need to first consider the target audience and how those individuals may use voice search to find your business. Questions to answer during this process include what questions would someone use in a voice search where your business would be the answer? What questions do we answer on our website or social media? How does our current SEO keywords and strategies fit into a voice search situation? It's all natural language. It's no more formulating just based on keywords. You're actually having to answer the question that somebody is asking. It can also be helpful to conduct some voice searches yourself, both to see how the feature works and what types of results come in when you ask about your business. This will show you how users are seeing your business already and how you can change your strategies to provide the best and most accurate results for your products or service. If your SEO voice search strategy is still lacking, ask your current customer base how they'd use voice search and what kinds of results they'd be looking for. It can be a very informative to see how your current customers are using voice search or not as well as asking prospective customers on social media outlets. By opening up this dialogue or this discussion about voice search, you can learn what your customers, prospective or current, would like to see from your business and how you can cater to their needs. What is your SEO voice search strategy? Share with the nation at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF nation. In addition, let us know how your trial of voice search goes. Do you have a funny story? Do you have something that you asked it to look up? 
you know, share it with the nation. You know, for me, I, I got uh, multiple devices in my house that have the voice search in it. And uh, one of the latest products that we got was an Amazon Echo for some research that we're doing on voice search um, and how it can pertain to SEO and uh, more in depth than what we went over today here. But, um, you know, when we first got it, we asked Alexa to bark like a dog. She came back and went bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. And we all laughed because we're like, we didn't ask for her to bark like Snoop Dogg. But, uh, you know, here a couple weeks later, you ask her to bark like a dog and she starts barking. So it, it it's constantly changing just like the search engine results change. So get out there, get in the nation, let us know your feedback, share with us any stories, let us know what your strategy includes, what methods you've tried. Have you asked your customers, have you, have you asked your clients let us know. Give us your feedback. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF Nation. Let's talk about your content game plan. In our previous discussions on SEO, we've talked about the importance of content, but now we're going to focus on it and go a little more in depth. Content is a major part of the equation when it comes to SEO, and it is basically what makes up the internet. Almost everything can be considered content. We commonly know content to be all the words and text we see when visiting a website. However, it goes deeper than that. It's also the images, the videos, infographics, press releases, ebooks, newsletters, blogs, slides, vlogs, guides, white papers, reviews, lists, research studies, and podcasts. Wow, so how do we take into account each of these and integrate them into our overall strategy. It boils down to knowing who your audience is. You need to consider the following. Who are you targeting? Where are they located? What device are they using? What is their attention span? And how do they prefer to consume content? When you take a 20-year-old male who is looking for cheats to the latest video game and a 55-year-old male who is searching for investment strategy, there is a huge difference. Yes, both are male, and they may have other things in common, but they are both on very different paths and seeking completely different content. The gamer most likely will have a short uh, attention span and simply desires a quick answer to solve his problem. He is more inclined to watch a 30-second video to get the answer than read a 2,500-word blog post. Meanwhile, our investor is more apt to read a longer, in-depth research document that can be downloaded as a PDF. Understanding these differences is how you will be successful with your content strategy. Before you embark on your journey of content creation, you must first understand your customer. Through your content, you will be talking with your audience, not at your audience. You need to engage them in order to gain trust and show you're an authority on the topic. Search engines reward pages that are informative, unique, and engaging. Do not just fill your page with tons of spam or content which is already all over the internet. This is not helpful and will get you to the opposite end of the search engine from where you desire to be. Do you want to be at the bottom on page 30 or do you want to be on page 1? How do you know you have good content? Your visitors are responding to it. This is how search engines know. Things like bounce rates, time on page, and other factors come into play. If you do not already have Google Analytics installed on your website, pause this episode right now and go do it. We talked briefly about Google Analytics before, and we will go more in depth in some future episodes. Basically, it is a free tool from Google that tells you about the traffic on your website, Who they are, how did they get there, what are they using, how long did they stay, etc, etc, etc. Hmm, 
some of the same questions we need to answer so that we can better understand our customers. If you need help getting Google Analytics installed, reach out to me. I will help you get it set up as well as give you a brief walkthrough on its usage. All right, back to content. Prior to producing any content, you need to take an honest look at it and think, is this something I would read? Would I trust this business? Would I click further? Would I fill out their contact form? Would I call this company and do business with them? If you your answer is no, then you should not post this content anywhere. You must be unique. If your content is the same as everyone else, then why should Google rank you number one? That spot is already filled. On the other hand, if you have something new, more informative, more entertaining, and visitors are interacting, then you deserve a consideration from the search engines. Wait, so Kevin, you're telling me that I can get on page one even if it's oversaturated and a popular keyword? Absolutely. Case in point, that same partnership I was referring back to in the work-life balance segment of the show? They had two extremely popular keywords that each see about 165,000 search queries in the United States on an average month. One of them has 1.1 million competitors and the other 3.86 million competitors, all fighting to be ranked on page one. In a period of about 60 days with a part-time effort, as we were working on some other things for them as well, we took them from pages 4 and 5, occasionally 6, to pages 1 and 2. Our goal is to be in the top 3 positions on page 1 for each of these two keywords. How did we do it? Audit, research, visitor analysis, develop an action plan, execute. No magic, no black hat techniques. They had good content, but it was all over the place. During our research phase, we noticed Google was having trouble knowing which page to rank for their keywords, as several pages on their site were focused on them. Some restructuring and remapping is showing to pay off. There were technical issues and some other things as well, but it all starts with an audit. Visit PinkTieTech.com and get your free website audit today. Content is king. Always has been and always will be. The only way to add value to the web is to inform, educate, or entertain. Everything else is garbage and we all know the internet already has enough garbage. Alright folks, that's all for this week. Be sure to visit the show notes page for links and helpful tips talked about in today's show at changerpov.com forward slash RBF 013. Share your thoughts on today's episode by joining the nation at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF nation. Be sure to join us next week as we continue our discussion on content and talk about Seven things every piece of content must contain. And don't forget, subscribe to Change Your POV so you never miss a great episode. All right, everybody, it's time to wrap up this show and get out of here. Life is short. Don't just dream, do. We will see you next week on Remove Before Flight. Thank you for listening.